the, the ADFS um, and Citrix Netscaler um, video course on you know the practical guide on how to deploy these um, two technologies together um, specifically for um, single sign-on with Office 365. Um, this is part two. Um, this is going to cover the high availability concepts, where Netscaler sits and some of the sort of um, networking aspect of you know where traffic from the internet hits and things like that. Um, my name's Ryan, I'm not going to bore you again with the details um, on who I am and what I do. Um, check out my blog um, if you are interested, however, um, and yeah, hopefully you'll enjoy the video. And if you watch the first video, you'll be familiar with this um, already. Um, so again, to go over the high availability concepts, um, the idea would be um, in production, you know, if you've got Netscale, the idea is that you're going to have at least two of these. Um, either physical or virtual appliances um, configured. Netscale can do all sorts of um, you know HA configurations. Um, the last installation I did was um, a HA pair, um, an active passive HA pair of physical um, MPX devices. In the lab, um, obviously I don't have a real Netscale in my lab, so I've only used um, a single VPX. Um, which is the, the, the virtual edition of Netscale. You can get a free license from Citrix um, if you want to lab it up. Um, the configuration is exactly the same. Um, as part of this course, I'm not going to cover actually how to HA the, Net, the, the Netscalers together, um, basically because it's so easy, it's not required. Um, and I don't have a, a license that allows me to do that. So what I want to cover is just um, you know the traffic flow from the internet and you know traversing through the network um, with regards to the Netscaler. So if we look over here, we've got two ADFS servers. Um, on the first video, we deployed one ADFS server. We threw it into an ADFS server farm. Later on in this video, we're going to add this server and we're going to join it to the same farm so that these two are effectively um, clustered um, or HA together, if you like. Um, by default, um, the first ADFS server remains primary until such times as it fails um, and then one of the other ADFS servers takes over. Um, so the primary server being... Um, that you know you do all the you do all the um, configuration changes on the primary so any changes you would do here and then they would automatically be replicated to the other ADFS server. Okay, so changes from the original diagram. If back on the first video we didn't have these devices um, in the topology, and what these are to symbolise um, are the V servers that sit on top of Netscaler. So. Netscaler is an application delivery controller um, and what a vServer is, is you know you can closely align it to what a VIP is if you're familiar with Windows NLB. It's basically like a logical address on the same network as the back-end service or servers that you're trying to load balance um, you know is on. So for example um, these servers are on the 172.16.10 um, network. Um, this server has dot two for example and this one is on dot three. What basically will happen is the V server will have a 172.16.10.4 address probably, um, and that will be how the ADFS server farm is represented to the network via the V server VIP address and not their individual IPs. So that basically means, um, you know, during the during the um, the pairing process when we when we come to pair the WAP proxies back to the ADFS servers, we won't point the WAP servers directly to ADFS like that, you know, one-to-one, one-to-one, because that doesn't give us any HA. What we would do is, from the DMZ network, we point the WAP servers to the VIP or the V server on the Netscaler. So say this is 172.16.10.4. Um, what we do on the WAP servers is we put um, a host file entry into each of these servers you know, that resolves, you know, our, our ADFS service name. So it might be sso.domain.com. And then we point, um, you know, the host file on both of these servers to this VIP address on this um, V server on the Netscale. So that means that when we try to pair the, the proxy servers to ADFS, the traffic hits the Netscale or V server, and then that load balances the traffic 
between um, the back end servers. This obviously allows all sorts of HA because the Netscaler is managing the traffic. If we did one to one mappings, you know, web application proxy to the one in the back end servers, it would just be a mess because if one of these failed, it wouldn't be aware and all that sort of stuff. Um, so, again, we'll, we'll go into the in depth configuration of the Netscaler in the next video, but just conceptually, this is how it works. Traffic hits the, the V server, the V server forwards the traffic back to the back end servers. In this example, um, I'm not going to be doing any kind of SSL offloading. The main reason because SSL offloading is very heavy on CPU cycles, um, and because I'm running all this on a virtual lab, um, you know, um, I don't have that CPU capacity um, presently. Um, so basically, I'm going to use the SSL bridged. Um, service on the Netscaler to pass the, the entire SSL connection all the way back to the ADFS server. Um, you have a multiple options of what we'll talk about in the actual Netscaler video, but um, you know SSL offloading, how that might be different. If you want to do SSL offloading and you have, you know, for example, um, a set of NPX hardware Netscalers with the FIPS module that, that allows you to do um, dedicated SSL offloading, um, the configuration is slightly different in which you have to have the, the certificate that ADFS uses on your Netscaler devices as well so that it can do the decryption at the at the Netscaler level. So the, if you were doing SSL lawful, and you, the decryption would be done here um, and the traffic would be passed back to the ADFS servers in clear text. You know, so it would be 443 to here and then the SSL would do the, the Netscale would do the SSL offload and then it would be four four and then it'd be sorry port eighty on clear um, HTTPS on the way back. However, as I'm not doing that in this instance, it's going to be four four three all the way back to the ADFS server so that the traffic doesn't get decrypted until it hits the back end servers. Um, so that's known as SSL bridge. So if you apply the same concept that I've just said, um, you know, for this side, you know, um, the, WAP, the WAP servers point to the VIP of the V server and not the individual servers. It's exactly the same on the WAP, the WAP um, side, you know, we've got this V server, another V server, um, which resides on the 192.168.100 network. Um, how this differs slightly is on our external, um, on an external exterior firewall, um, that has our public IP addresses, we um, are going to have a NAT rule, a static NAT rule that takes all the traffic from this firewall on port 443 on a public address and forward it to the VIP um, or, of this V server. That is how we will expose ADFS and the WAP servers to the internet. There will be a rule that forwards all the traffic from the firewall on a certain address, forwards down to the VIP on this V server, and then the V server then load balances using SSL bridge to the WAP servers. The WAP servers then use their host file entry to then look up the WAP, um, the, the VIP, sorry, address of ADFS, and then ADFS um, talks back to um, the Netscaler V server. Okay, so that is conceptually how it works. Um, in addition to this, you know, on the same sort of thing, on this exterior firewall, as we will have um, a public IP address, um, TCP port 443 is required um, on that fire, on that address um, and it does have to be a static public address because what we will have to do um, in one of the later stages is in your external DNS, you know, in your GoDaddy managed or your 123reg DNS, we will create an A record that points your ADFS service name, whether it be, you know, sso.domain.com, that points to um, that firewall um, address. Um, yeah, and then again, the firewall will not down to this. So that will go between the, the WAP proxies and then the WAP proxies will look up this. Um, v server and then it will be it will be beautiful and it will work okay this video um, is configuring um, the second ADFS server um, and joining it to the ADFS server farm so I have a second server here um, it's ADFS 02 it's got an address um, in the LAN it's added to the domain I've also added and installed the, the SSL certificate um, as we discussed in the last video and I've also installed the ADFS server role. Um, so we just have to go and configure the role. Um, so if you remember back to the first video, we created the you know the farm with the first server. Um, in this um, instance, we are going to um, add this federation server to a new to, to an existing farm. So we're going to again pass through the administrator um, the administrator account and click next. 
this um, you know type in the primary um, the primary um, server's name. So obviously, if your name resolution isn't working correctly, that isn't going to work. Um, so just make sure DNS is working. Again, if you didn't insert install the certificate correctly, it wouldn't be in this drop down. Um, so click next. Um, again, you know, manage service account. I'm using an administrator account because this is a demo. Use a group manage service account um, if you're doing it in production. So click next. Um, okay, so that's there seems to be an issue there. So it appears to be name resolution. Did I enter it correctly? So let's just do a little bit on the side troubleshooting. Um, okay, so I see what I did. I actually didn't type FS01, I just typed FS. So if we just backtrack slightly and I add that FS1 and then just add this and next and keep everything the same and everything's all good. So again, you know, just make sure your name resolution is fine and you don't make um, stupid mistakes like I just did and click configure. It should add it to the, to the farm pretty quickly. Um, it, it's a fairly quick process to complete. Okay, so once it completes, we'll just click close. Um, and now this is effectively a passive server because um, the primary, um, this is not the primary DFS server. So just to check that um, and check the replication between the two, we'll just um, come down and open up the ADFS um, manager. Um, and as you will see um, on the primary server, we have the option down the left to configure certain things. Um, but you know, as you'll see from here, it's pulling a configuration from LabFS1. Um, you know, and you'll see the time um, timestamp here um, of um, when the last configuration um, was taken. Um, I come across a very very interesting um, issue um, with a customer that was deploying ADFS um, in which they were authenticating and redeveloping in you know in house built applications to authenticate against ADFS. Um, and for some reason, one of the configurations um, that was made to one of the relay and party trusts, which is basically the connection from ADFS to your application, um, you know, for example, Office 365 has a relay and party trust. Um, the whole um, replication between the ADFS servers broke because of a, an incorrect configuration and the relay and party trust as it created some sort of corruption in the database. So I'm actually just going to pull up the blog post of mine um, that outlines um, the way to fix this. I mean, it's a very specific problem, I think, but, you know, it's worth knowing that in con you know incorrectly configured rules inside EDFS can break things like the replication. So I'm just going to open up the, um, the blog post that I'm talking about and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Yes, yeah, so as promised, this is the this is the article that I wrote back in December um, 2015 um, outlining the problem. Um, this was something that I actually had to engage Microsoft support with. Um, but, you know, the takeaway from this for you should really just be that um, incorrect, incorrectly configured um, really in party trust applications can break the synchronization um, between the ADFS um, servers. So what I did in this instance was actually remove um, the second ADFS server from the farm and then try to re-add it and then I kept getting this error um, which obviously is like a programmatic error with absolutely no help at all. Um, so again, it turned out to be an incorrect configuration in deep inside the database. Um, yeah, and from memory, it was because it was a duplicate policy usage statement somewhere. So again, just be aware that it's yeah duplicate one and two. So that's what was causing the synchronization. So again, that could potentially be um, a good thing because um, this gives you some comfort to know that if if the ADFS database has got any sort of corruption in it, it doesn't replicate it. So bear that in mind, you know, that if you may have a problem, it may be because you've got corruption in your database and the ADFS is trying to protect itself by not replicating it to all the servers. Okay, I hope part two has been useful. Um, next up, we'll be um, configuring the NetScaler itself. Okay, cheers, thanks.